Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be covering how to make a particle emitter. So in this case, with my most recent Instagram post, I have this awesome particle emitter that's emitting these particles from the bottom up. Let me go ahead and show you guys how to do this from scratch. Let's go ahead and hop right into it. I'm going to go to file new, completely new document. I'm going to get rid of my cube and my light. I'm going to add in a plane. I'm just going to scale this up by five and then I'm going to apply the scale. Now we need something to actually be emitted. So let me go ahead and add another plane, move this up, scale it on the X, scale it down a little bit, and we're gonna use this, I'm just gonna move it off to the side, as our actual emitter object. So now that we have everything set up, we need to click on our main plane, add a particle emitter, and then if we go ahead and press play, you're going to see we have everything working. Now, it's going down. We actually want this to go up. So how do we make all these particles go up? Well, we want to go ahead over to our gravity settings. We want to go to the Z value, and we want to put something like positive, like maybe 5. So again, if we press play, now you can see the particles are traveling upwards. They are following the gravity, which is now negative. Well, it used to be negative, now it's positive, so everything is going to travel upwards. Now, how do we actually make these particles follow the piece that we just made right here? Well, first, let me save this as emitter, just so that it is all saved up in case Blender crashes. Go ahead and click on your uh, emitter plane, go over to where it says render, and instead of halo, we're actually gonna select object, and then we are going to use the eyedropper tool to select our plane. Now you'll notice these are really small. So you can actually adjust the scale here. And you'll also notice they're not oriented in the correct way. So you want to click on object rotation. And then you want to take your, um, your original object and rotate it on the X 90 degrees. And now you'll see if we go back, everything is working properly. Now, if you guys want to look into these settings, I'll explain just a couple of the simple ones here. So right now, um, all of these will be the same material as they are in our instance object over here. But if you guys go over to the right hand side, you're going to see the number of particles right now we're at 1000. Now if I bump this up to 2000, and I go back, you'll see there's a lot more particles. So that is just basically what that number means. And then frame start, I usually try to start it before frame one. So I'll do like negative 100. And what that's going to do is when we go back, everything will have already started before the animation begins. And I like this because it doesn't have a harsh start. It's already in motion right before frame one. So I, tech, I usually try to set that number to a negative number. Again, that's frame start. The end is what you would think it is. It's when the particle emitters stop. So if I made, made the end 50, let me play this back. You'll notice at frame 50, everything stops. Now we don't want that. I want this to go all the way to the end. So I'm just gonna set the end frame to 250. And then lifetime is how long the particles last. So if we say 10 frames, the particles won't last that long and they won't get very far. So in my case, I want the lifetime to actually be 250 as well. All these particles will stay throughout the whole animation. Now, if you, set, if you see where your camera ends and you want your particles to die off there, you can just do some fine tuning. You can try something like 50 frames and then the particles will die off right about there. So this is just a really quick way to kind of save some space on Blender, make sure you're not using too much processing power. Now let's go ahead and get into some materials and stuff like that. Right now, everything seems to be set up pretty nicely. You guys can go into your cache and bake this if you want. I typically do that because I find that if I don't bake the emitter, um, I have some serious issues with the render. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this again, head over to my rendered view. I'm gonna go to cycles, GPU, and then I'm just going to add in an HDRI for our background here. Let's go to my HDRI folder and I'm gonna choose something like this. That looks fine. And then for our original emitter object, I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna give this a new emissive shader. Or is it emission shader? And I'll give it a value of like eight. That looks good. Now, as you guys can see, this is looking really, really cool so far. Um, there's a couple other things we can we can do here. So first of all, let me snap to my camera and set up like a quick scene. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make this 1080 by 1920 for Instagram portrait. I'm also going to make an orthographic camera view. I think this looks great. Um, and then I'm gonna add in a floor plane underneath of our original plane. Just scale that up so it's outside of the camera bounds. And then I'm gonna make that a darker color. Now, if you click on our emitter, we can actually hide the emitter. So if you scroll down here, you can click on show emitter under render. 
And then if you go to viewport display, you can also uncheck it there. So now if we play this back, we still have our emitter going on here. So it looks really, really good. However, you won't see that original plane, which is the source of the emitter. Now, let me go ahead and scale this background plane up. Let me zoom out on our orthographic view here so we can kind of see everything a little bit better. Um, so far, everything's looking good. What I think I want to do is kind of add an object into our scene. So I'm just going to add Suzanne in here, scale her up a bit. She's looking really, really good. I'm going to give her a subdivision surface modifier. Right click, shade auto smooth. Give her a metallic shader. Just something to be in our scene here. Now, one thing you can do is you can scale down your emitter a little bit and kind of have it sitting right at the surface there. So now if we play this back, we're gonna get something like this. And this is looking really, really cool. Now, there's nothing really crazy going on in the scene, but I wanna show you guys a little trick that I used to kind of bring this these particles to the next level. So with my particle selected, I'm gonna head over to the shading tab kind of zoom in on my particle here. So this is our particle here that is being emulated. I'm going to actually just make a custom shader for this real quick. This looks really good, but I'm actually gonna make a mix shader. I'm gonna add in a mix shader node, kind of plug that in right here. And then for my second side, I'm gonna use a transparent BSDF like this. And as we can see, it's working nicely. If we slide this one way or the other in rendered view, you'll notice it's completely transparent. Now, how do we make this look kind of faded? What well, my goal is to have this fade from the bottom or the top. So the way we do that is we type in color ramp, we type in mapping, oops, mapping. Why is it not letting me type? There we go, there we go, mapping, sorry guys. Uh, and then texture coordinate node. All right, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and plug the generated into the vector vector into the FAC and then the color into the FAC. Now you're not gonna notice anything yet, but if you start to slide these around, you'll notice we have a little bit of a fade here. So now how do we kind of customize this? Well, I'm gonna take all my rotation values and mess around with them until I get something I like. I think that's perfect there. Now what's cool is we can now take this and fade it as much as we want. So if we want a nice gradual fade, we can do something like that. And then of course you can adjust your scale as needed. So I'm holding shift as I'm doing this. That looks pretty good. And I think that looks really, really cool. And again, you guys can adjust this as much as needed. You can adjust the location of this. Something like that looks pretty cool. And it kind of reminds me of this pixelated kind of look. Now again, you guys can mess with this as much as you need to. I think this looks pretty darn cool though. So you can go and you can change this uh, color ramp setting as well. You can do ease, that's a little bit more faded. So if you guys are looking for something like that, I think that looks pretty much perfect. Now what's really cool is you can see that if I adjust this particle size, right, you can now make these even thinner as well, something like that. And now I'm gonna go back over to the layout tab. I'm gonna click on my particle emitter again and I'm just gonna go over the settings one more time. I think I'm gonna give this something like 500 instead of 2,000 particles. And now if we play this back, this, look, this looks really, really cool. It's kind of subtle, but it looks really nice. And if you guys wanna take it one step further, add one more plane, scale it up, bring it down to about where that emitter is coming from, like right about there, and then go ahead and give that that same uh, emissive shader or just or give it a completely new emissive shader with a value of like nine and now if we go ahead and play this back we have this nice particle emitter plane down below and I just think this looks really nice it's just a really nice effect let me go ahead and zoom the camera out just a little bit more and then we'll scale this in again you guys can take your particle emitter scale it down as much as you need to I think this looks pretty solid if we play this back this looks really nice. Now, there's one more thing I'm gonna do. I am going to go over to the compositing tab and I'm gonna set this up to make this look, oops, even nicer. Let me scale this up too. Okay, cool. So right now, again, guys, this is what we have so far and it's looking really, really nice. But I wanna take it one more step, one more level up, go over to the compositing tab, click on use nodes. And right in here, you're gonna get these two nodes. I'm gonna kind of give them some space here. I'm gonna add a viewer node put that right here and then I'm going to add a glare node and put that oopsies sorry about that guys I just dropped a tripod 
All right, we're gonna put the glare node in the middle here like that. And we're gonna plug the image into the image. This is why I don't do live streams while I'm doing tutorials, where I try not to. But anyway, we have the glare node. Now you're not gonna see anything right now because we're gonna need to actually render this out. So I'm gonna go to my render settings. I'll do like 100 samples just for this example. We'll do optics and then I'll just do F12 to render that out. And let's go ahead and see what we get here. Give this a quick second to render. Now, as you can see, we have this crazy glare effect. Now, this is not what I want, but what's great is now that we've rendered this, we can actually mess with it in the compositor. So if you press V on the key, key on your um, keyboard, it'll kind of zoom this image out so you can see it a little bit better. Now, under glare, instead of streaks, we're gonna do um, fog glow. Now, fog glow is gonna kind of give everything uh, just a slight glow effect. And if you press Alt V, you can zoom back in to kind of see what that's gonna look like. Threshold, I'll set it to like 0.5, maybe 0.2. And as you can see, these are now glowing. And this looks really, really, really cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. That is kind of how you get that really cool particle emitter effect under um, an object or just like coming from a plane. Um, you could even make Suzanne have the actual particle emitter coming from her as well. Um, this is pretty much how you would do something like this. Now, this is pretty much set up and good to go, guys. So um, the only last thing I'll do is I'll just make this kind of like a grid floor material. So I'm gonna go over to solid mode, click on that plane. I'm just gonna subdivide it like 10 times. Cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a wireframe modifier to that. And now we have this really cool looking like grid floor look. I think I'm gonna add a solidify modifier as well. That looks awesome. Bring that down all the way to the surface here. And now if we play this back, we have this really cool looking floor emitter and it just looks really nice. So that is pretty much the tutorial guys. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if you guys enjoyed this content, please let me know in the comments below. I think there was a lot that we taught here today. Uh, and I think this can be used for a variety of projects. Um, and then, sorry guys, one last thing I forgot to mention before I actually wrap this up, try to enable motion blur as well. It's going to help with those really streaky lines. If you want those particles to look more streaky. Um, other than that, please subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Check out the discord, check out the Instagram, check out my TikTok, uh, my Patreon, my gum road, all the links will be down in the description below. Have a great day. Go ahead and check out this particle effect, create it for yourself in Blender, let me know how it works out, and I will talk to you guys in the next tutorial.